this week on the Ritual Misery podcast, Shakira. Oh my God. Uh, you and your your skinny blondes. Um, I was just as excited about Super Bowl uh, Fifty Four. You know, until the end. Of course, of course. Uh, we're also going to talk about some veterans stuff. Yeah. Um, speaking of veterans, we're both veterans. Do you play Division Two? Because I've been playing with a guildy, and it's been amazing. No, that was that was a good time for you to say something. Oh, no, I don't play Division Two. Oh, okay. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. This is uh, episode 241 and we are recording this on Thursday, the 6th of February, 2020, 2020. I'm going to get that figured out eventually. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. We don't matter because we have... Oh wait, we don't have a guest this week. Kent, I guess you finally matter. What's up, man? <laughs> oh man, what a start to the show. We're only going about 30 minutes late, which um, I guess isn't too bad for us. Look, 30 minutes late is right on time, all right? That's how that goes, man. 30 minutes late, right on time. Yep, audio is a thing, and uh, hopefully we got it figured out for this. Doubt it. Uh, man, uh, Super Bowl was Sunday. Yeah. No, it started out great, man. The first three quarters were amazing. <laughs> then Patrick Mahomes woke up. Uh, well, I don't know if Patrick Mahomes woke up as much as uh, Kyle Shanahan once again fell asleep in the fourth quarter. Right. Yep. And uh, last time he was in the Super Bowl, he was the offensive coordinator for the Falcons. And as you know, they had a 28 point lead, 28 to 0 lead, 28 to 3 over the Patriots. And then in the fourth quarter, they just, I think all of them just decided to go home and Bra Tom Brady ran over every single one of them. And basically the same thing happened. Yeah. I was, um, I was, I was cheering for the Chiefs. Uh, I kind of had a split loyalty on this one. Um, but I'm historically, since I was a child, I would always like basically fall in love with a quarterback and that would be my team. Mm. Uh, which is what actually brought me to the 49ers originally because I was a big Joe Montana fan. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Patrick Mahomes. And, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. I was, I was pretty happy with the fourth quarter. <laughs> so somehow I, I told, I seemingly told everyone under the sun that I wanted the Niners to win, but I expected the Chiefs to win, except for you. Yep. Um, I, uh, because yeah. everyone else I talked to, that was legit. Like, I told everyone that I, 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 I just had it. I just had, I, I, and, and for so many reasons, like, the coach won, what, what is his name? Uh, Andy Reid? No, is it Andy Reid? I do. It sounds uh, right. Like Yep, sure. Sounds good anyway, to me. Anyway, he won his 222nd game on February 2nd, 2020. 2-2-2020? Mm. Two, two, yeah. And it had been 50 years since they'd been in the Super Bowl, and they won the last one they were in, the Chiefs anyway. It All of the press coverage leading up to the Super Bowl was about Mahomes and about Andy Reid, and like everything was about the Chiefs. Like, it was... I of course I'm a conspiracy theorist and I will tell you right now <laughs> that I think all major sports are rigged to maximize profits. That is just how that's just how I I feel it goes. And all the indicators were that the Chiefs were the team to watch for the Super Bowl. It just it it, it just worked out exactly how I thought it would go. The Niners would take a lead they take the lead into probably the end of the third or early fourth quarter, and then suddenly shit would just fall apart, and that's exactly what happened. Um, See confirmed, I guess. It, yeah, and, and yeah, Illuminati confirmed. It's exactly what happened in the the Chiefs' previous two games. They just started their comeback later this time. So, yeah. um, so I don't know. I I was a, I had the exact opposite impression going into it. I wanted the Chiefs to win, but I fully expected the 49ers to win, and the first three quarters pretty much went exactly how I thought the game was going to go. Um, so, I don't know. I, th I thought it was a good game. It was a fun game to watch. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. How about that halftime show? Didn't care for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and not for, like, a lot of the reasons people said, oh, part of it was in Spanish. No, I enjoyed that part. Um, Shakira and J-Lo, they looked fabulous. 
people were spazzing out about JLo's outfit, how you could basically see everything. But if you look at the pictures, she was clearly wearing Spanx. So she, yeah. was, she wasn't even close to nude. Um, I, I have show times. Anytime, you, uh, it, anytime a live performance happens in front of an audience, on television, I assume it's a Millie Vanilli uh, 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 <laughs> sequence of events. And uh, Britney Spears, uh, at least in, in my memory, was famous for this because she would have the song playing with the vocal track in the background, like play, have the vocal track playing in the background. So if she was taking a breath or whatever, the background track would fill in. But then when she was singing, it would gate out the background track and it would be her voice that came through. Mm. And typically on a live presentation for tv that's how people they will do it that's how artists will do it that's how most artists will do it when they're dancing and doing tons of things that way they, they're they not trying to gasp for breath and trying to you know everything else um it was just exceptionally obvious that that's what was going on this time and it kind of destroyed the illusion for me and yeah i just didn't i didn't really care for it overall like it didn't have anything to offer me that i thought was spectacular but the entire time i was watching it i was thinking kent is gonna love this shit <laughs> i wasn't expecting a lot going into the, the halftime i'm i'm usually not a fan of the halftime shows uh, it's just kind of like oh look at all the lights and the dancers and right okay um no i thought this one was pretty good i actually sat down and watched it um i i mentioned during the uh, lead up to the show that uh shakira oh my god she looks absolutely wonderful. Um, um, yeah, that was fun to watch. Yeah, but so I mean, I'm with you though. Like it's you know, it's a it's a perform it's a live performance. There's the you know choreography, which I thought the choreography was actually pretty good. Mm. Uh, I did enjoy the songs and the, the mashups and and all that kind of stuff. Um, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. I had no idea there was controversy about it until like today i was just like scrolling through sports stuff and some like the oh the halftime show controversy like what the fuck are they talking about uh, so i actually had to click on an article to read oh my why god people were upset and i was like are you fucking kidding me right now yeah the the female singers were wearing skimpy clothes well, what? last year everybody got pissed off because Adam Levine took his shirt off, and I, I, I enjoyed making fun of it, but I wasn't offended by it. And then this year, it's like, oh well, well they were all all bothered by it last year, and this year they're, uh, it's just, you know what? The halftime shows have been shit since Super Bowl Fifty, when they were going to do the Super Bowl. Well, when they did the Super Bowl at Santa Clara in Levi Stadium, and they told Metallica, no, you can't come do the Super Bowl uh, halftime show in your hometown. And since then, just been like, you know what? I don't, I don't care. Like, it's got to come out with something fantabulous for me to even consider wanting to watch it. And this year, like, I, I went away and I went to the bathroom. Like, it was just, it was halftime. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, so this is a great way to start out a nerd show by talking about sports ball. Hey, uh, we celebrate all geekhood. That's right. That is correct uh to include video games uh, yes. tell us tell us uh, about your video game adventures of so your not too long ago i told y'all that uh i had hooked back up with aie alia aieta est man that's hard to say which is uh latin for the dais cast it's scott johnson's guild his War world of warcraft guild but it's expanded it's blown up and pretty much any multiplayer game online has a branch of aie and the division has one and I was I, I, I hooked up with him. I got in the Discord and was chatting a little bit and stuff like that. And but nobody was really on. And then suddenly the the they came out with a new patch and it auto promoted people according to how much they play, and demoted people if they weren't playing. So people in the guild, in your clan as Division Two calls it, would be auto promoted if they were more active in playing. So I came on. I jumped onto Discord one day and had a bunch of messages. I was clan leader, clan captain in Division 2 for AIE. And I was like, well, shoots, how did that happen? Come to find out because it's, it's whoever's been playing the most and earning the most points and this and that, which is great, except I hadn't played in five weeks. So, oh, my God. So, Because the holidays, you know, you just you, you get out of your normal habits. So uh, I went in there, transferred clan leadership back over to uh, Durus, who is the, the supposed to be the clan leader. Um, 
and he and I and a couple other people have just been on more lately because we're doing a kind of a, a gear push before the next patch. And it's been a lot of fun. And that is one game, like, I can play by myself, you know, go shoot imaginary bullets at imaginary people. Um, but playing with a, a dedicated group, like people that you play with on a consistent basis, just makes that game so much better. Like, because you can group up and you don't feel bad when you're not pulling your weight because you're trying a new, you know, new equipment out or whatever else. They know. They know you're trying some new stuff out. And they can give you feedback, you know, and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And the game itself is a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Very cool, man. I, yeah. If you're into strategic first-person shooters, you should uh, you should definitely try Division Two. I think it, last week it was on sale for like eight bucks. Yeah, I I was really big into Rainbow Six when it first came out. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I mean, outside of mobile gaming, I almost never sit down to play a video game anymore. See, I've cut all the mobile games out. Mm. Once I beat Grim Valor, um, I don't have any games installed on any of my mobile devices at all. Yeah, I probably was in a position where I I could do that and not care, but then Mario Kart Tour came out and right. uh, that's kind of well, sucked my downtime. I think that's actually installed on my phone, but I I haven't played it since like yeah. the week after it came out or something. Right, yeah, and you only played it like once because you never uh your points never registered on the board. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> nope. Um, anyway, so you have been filling your time instead of with gaming with watching some Parks and Recreation, though. Dude, I, I finished Parks and Rec this week. Yeah? I'm both, um, happy, um, because I, you know, I'm a completionist and I completed it and I got to check that box that, yes, I've seen all of Parks and Rec, but I'm also sad because There's no I, more Parks and Rec to watch. <laughs> dude, I love Parks and Rec. Have you watched it? No. Watched it? Oh my God. Okay, I have spent this see, last week working my ass off or sitting on the pooper. And not in, and not in a way that was like, hey, let me go watch a TV show while I'm pooping for the next 45 minutes. It's been more like, um, hey, I'm working. Oh, no, I got to go. <laughs> right, right. Um, you, you've seen The Office, though, right? Uh, several episodes, yes. Yeah. and Several okay. discombobulated episodes. Okay. Did, and did you enjoy your limited experience with The Office? I think it's fun. I think it's an interesting experiment, and uh, I enjoy the humor. Yeah, so I really enjoyed The Office, and um, a lot of people were telling me, well, shit, dude, if you like The Office, you really need to watch Parks and Rec. I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Um, while they were correct that I would enjoy Parks and Rec, uh, they're not really the same. Like, they're not really at all the same. Maybe, maybe like season one, if you compare season one to season one, I could see it. Uh, but Parks and Rec takes you places that, that you never went in The Office, um, in fact, like the last, probably the last half of the run of the show, it was like seven seasons, I think like the back half of that, every episode, almost every single episode got me like in the emotions, <laughs> like I, like probably half of those episodes I had like tears well enough in my eye, either from something made me incredibly happy or something made me sad or whatever just mm. the feels were happening and like i i mean obviously you can attribute that to to the writing and and the acting but just the the the, the quality of the characters like the characters were fully formed humans yeah none of them were one dimensional and the way that those characters interacted with with each other and like you could put yourself there or you, you felt like you were part of their group. And it was like, if you're happy for them, it's because you're, you know, you're happy for your friends or you're sad because something that happened with your friend. You know what I mean? It's not gotcha. like watching characters. Um, it's great. I highly, highly, highly recommend to anybody that likes a good sitcom to check out parks and rec. Uh, so good. And you can see fat, uh, star Lord. <laughs> That's another reason. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite clips on TV ever, ever, is uh, Asian Jim. <laughs> okay, yes. So, um, yeah, I, I I just wanted to bring that up. That's that, that clip. Yeah, that's a, a reference from The Office. Yes. Uh, Every time I watch it, I end up watching the whole thing and laughing the entire time. Like, it is just so well played. One of my favorite things from The Office was... Uh, 
stuff like that. It was it was Jim messing with Dwight. Uh, some of the best <laughs> comedy. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, Dwight just never quite figured it out. Anyway. All right. Um, if you would like to cry with us and share stories, feel free to join in on our Patreon. Ritual Misery has a Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash ritual misery. And there things are funded, like <laughs> trying to get Kent a new soundboard maybe because, well, that one doesn't like him anymore than it likes me. Um, or we have big things in the work for South by, big things that are going to cost uh, a ton of money that we might be fronting up. Um that's all that's all courtesy of our patrons at patreon.com slash rich misery making uh, shows and live events better for you absolutely and you can also get pre-shows and post shows and exclusive interviews and uh, videos of Amos and I from over half our lives ago uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't have seen the light of day um, get in there and check them out only at patreon.com slash rich misery all right. Um, and yes, we, we're not going to skip over it entirely. There's no movie draft minute this week, but we are still in third place. We are going to finish in third place. Congratulations to DKG and moving on. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. 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 My game this week is called National Order of Ritual Misery Veterans Association of America. Or Normva. <laughs> Care to guess what the game is about? National Order of Ritual Misery Veterans Association of America. I'm going to say it's an organization that raises money to, uh, to help with the alcoholics of the Ritual Misery uh, uh, organization. And the veterans therein, and dealing with their the issues arising from the alcoholism, aka not enough money to buy more beer. That sounds good to me. Uh, so, I looked up veterans organizations. Okay. You know, I wanted to just kind of see how many were out there, uh, specifically oh. in the United States. Lots. Lots. And um, I started reading through some of them, and I was like, "Ooh, I know what this week's game is going to be." <laughs> Is this a real U.S. veterans organization oh. or is this that I made up? Okay. And I can't wait to see how you do <laughs> on this. Uh, let's see if I can get the DOD. Ah, right. <laughs> That's right. You can, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's just jump right in. All right. That was so, Amos, a pun. You're, you're going to tell me, is this veterans organization real or fake aztec club of 1847 fake it seems really weird to have the aztecs in 1847 i am sorry that is in fact a real veterans organization in in the united states <laughs> <clears throat> All right, not starting out very strong. Let's see how you do with this one. Okay. National Association of Real Men. Norm? I want to say Norm is real. You say that Norm is real. Norm. It is not real. Oh, I'm doing great. No, not not even. <sighs> You're going to struggle with the D tonight i think oh uh, what's new <laughs> all right so let's try this one veterans for friendship of extraterrestrials veterans for friendship of extraterrestrials v fet <laughs> v fet that's right v fet i'm gonna say it's real we're not hearing your sounders by the way no. oh no no okay well uh, you got the wah, 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 wah. It's better when you do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, okay. Um, so you're zero for three yeah. so far. <sighs> All right. Well, if I can't get the D, at least I'll get the O. <laughs> uh, you can hope. Grand Army of the Republic. 
Grand Army of the Republic. Gar. I'm going to say that's real. Still, finally, not, still not hearing your sounders. <laughs> yeah, so finally, you get what correct. I don't know why that one's not... Uh, okay. It happens. Wait. All right, so you are one... One for four. four. Military Order of the Cootie. Military Order of the Cootie? Oh, that's got to be... That's, that's got to be... Don't, please tell me that's real. <laughs> it is, in fact, real. See? Okay. Oh, my God. And I, I, I clicked on it to see what it is, and it sounded really boring. It was like a VFW like brotherhood or something i don't know and i was like okay never mind yeah it's not i, I am curious how it got its name like so cootie like is that like like oh no she's got cooties and she touched me like is you know is that what it is or maybe i mean this is a veterans organization i don't know hmm. i don't know i have to look into that a little bit more all right so your next one mm -hmm. brotherhood of the national defense service medal It seems too easy. I'm going to say it's fake. Still can't hear <laughs> you, Sanders. It is fake. It totally is fake. Uh, so the National Defense Service Medal. How hard is it, as a member of the military, how difficult is it to receive the National Defense Service Medal? It is either impossible or unavoidable. Exactly. Depending on when you came in, because it's automatically awarded depending on whether or not we are in a defensive, com uh, defensive conflict. Right. So every single member of the military serving currently has one. Has one. <laughs> right. There, there, there. Are actually, there are more period. There, there are fewer periods now than there ever were of when you don't qualify. Exactly. So Kent and I both qualified for two. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and to to have an organization called the Brotherhood of the National Defense Service Medal, I thought was just the idea of that would be fucking hilarious. It would just be all the dudes. <laughs> like yeah, all exactly, of them because it's a brotherhood, right? Yeah. Um. Oh my god. All right. All the dudes plus some women. I mean, we're not gonna. Yeah. Like I mean, I, I don't know. I'm I'm not gender specific here. The like a brotherhood can be can be chicks. Uh, okay, so a brotherhood can be chicks. A sisterhood can't be dudes. I mean, it could be. Uh, I mean, it, I don't it know. had to be a very specific subset of dudes. Though. But see, when you say dudes, like I call women dude sometimes. Oh, like dude, check this out. And I'm talking to. Well, it's more of a term of address than an actual like gender specific. Uh, yeah. uh, pronoun. Well, I think I think dudes. Well, it's, it's kind of like Spanish, right? Where you have you use the masculine noun for males and yeah. the, the feminine noun for females, right? But if you have a mixed group, you always default to the masculine, right? So, right, because uh, most languages are so, misogynistic. Well, sure, sure. Um, <laughs> if you say like like my dudes. I'm hanging out with my dudes, my homies, and it's I, a mixed group. Like I think it applies. I have never said my dudes. <laughs> Unless I was quoting George Carlin in Bill and Ted. Yes. Uh, yep. My dudes. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Next one. Number seven. Military Order of the Loyal Legion of the United States. That sounds like Malu and Mal Mollus. That sounds like crap. I'm going to say it's fake. It is, in fact, real. Of course it is. What's the right. longest acronym you can think of? Oh, dude. <laughs> like, like, like Venom, Vicious Evil Network of Mayhem? You know, like, that's five letters. So, What's the longest acronym you can think of? I am so happy that you know that Venom is the Vicious Evil Network of Mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ask Your Parents. And they probably won't know either. No. So there's like a select few of our peers even know what the fuck mask is. Which right. Is mobile, mobile Armored Strike Command. Right, Command with, Command with a K. K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just one of the greatest cartoons and in, in, in set of toys. Oh, of the all. toys were amazeballs. Yep. Oh. Such, 
Like, can we start a like a veterans organization for like talking about mask and watching mask and collecting mask toys? It, it had to be mask and venom though. Well, sure, sure. I mean, venom it, like it's like. But the name the name would yeah. have to have venom in it as well, so it could be a double acronym and be even longer. Right. Because okay. as we're as we're seeing, if you have a veterans organization, the more letters you can put in the acronym, the better off you are. That's a good point. Clearly, it's it's a dick contest. We might have to start that organization. We should come up with a backronym for Ritual Misery. Oh, man. If we could come up with a backronym for the Ritual Misery podcast, like all 48 letters that is or whatever. Oh, my God. Everybody everybody needs to get into our, um, uh, bit.ly slash RMP Discord and give us ideas of... Uh, what is the backronym for the Ritual Misery podcast? Oh my god, that is brilliant. That's oh, going to be amazing. Oh my god! All right, number eight, which by the way, you have three correct answers out of seven so far. Okay, so I gotta I gotta swing for the fences here because uh, otherwise I'll miss the D. <laughs> that is correct. Number eight, Korean Peninsula Peacetime Survivors Organization. Korean Peninsula peacetime survivor. Why did they? Why do they need peacetime survivors? <laughs> false. You're calling that one false. Yeah. Uh, you would be correct. Okay. So peacetime. I've seen survivors. a lot of like Facebook groups about um, you know surviving the year in Korea because of you know all the alcohol consumption and all of that. Um, so that, that was kind of my inspiration for this one. Korean Peninsula Peacetime Survivors the, Organization. The best way to make Staff Sergeant is to go to Korea as a tech. Dude, I'm surprised I didn't make Staff Sergeant when I was there. <laughs> I was, I'm surprised I didn't make Staff Sergeant either time I went there. And for totally different reasons. Yeah. Um, okay, so now I am, what, uh, uh, four, for set, four for eight? Four for eight, right. Four now. for eight. I'm halfway. I need at least... I need both of these. Yeah. I need I one I need one for my dignity and two for the D. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good way to put it. All right. Um the because, next one. I mean I mean theoretically if I had just said all of them were true, I would have gotten roughly half of them correct. So uh, true. yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a, good point. <laughs> That's a really good point. So all right, let's go let's do this. Right, next one is National Nonners Association. That sounds like a Facebook group. I'm going to go with false. There's no way that's a veterans org. <laughs> You'd be correct. <laughs> nonners don't like to be called nonners. No. So, like, to have an association of nonners is kind of... All right, final question for the D. Let's do it. All right, your final one, number 10. Fashion for Fighters Foundation. Fashion for Fighters Foundation? Oh, please tell me that's true. I just like the idea of having triple Fs run around. I just want to say I'm part of the triple F organization. Congratulations on getting the D. <laughs> A well earned D. Da, 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 da. Oh man. Uh, that was actually really fun to put together. I da, 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 and then um, it took me like five minutes to do it. Nice. All right. Um, so tonight's theme, as we said, our tagline for the show is friends, geeks, veterans, parents, nerds, and gamers. So when we don't have a big topic to talk about, we are just going to pick the next one of those in line. This week is veterans. So we are here to talk about veterans issues, which would have been really cool if we had thought about this before this afternoon. Um, but with you having done the organizations, I'm going to ask you, Kent, what veterans organizations have you dealt with and what impression have you had of them? So once upon a time I was a member of the VFW and American Legion. Oh, both, huh? Yep. You're like, you know what? I need two bars to go to. Right. Well, I joined them before I was even of legal drinking age. Oh, well. Um, but, um, 
Yeah, I mean, okay, so they do they do some good things. So there, there is like community outreach projects and or you know like community assistance type things. Mm-hmm. There's, um, um, uh, yeah, there's also a bar. <laughs> Um, you know, the, the biggest know. the biggest thing they do are run programs and facilitate programs that help military members into the tr- transition of retirement and veteranhood, whether that's getting out, getting kicked out, uh, retiring, uh, dying and helping the family that's left behind, holding yep. events for veterans, um, being a All place of- for veterans to hold events of their own. Right. And yep. and community outreach, uh, letting, letting other people know what veterans programs are out there, how they can help, and how right. the programs can help them. That's really what the VFW and American Legion do. Uh, primarily, yep. they fund these things by typically having a restaurant and or bar on premises uh, with low cost drinks, but still raise money and use volunteers, primarily volunteers, to work the events and uh to work the restaurant and um you know the people certain people the manager will be paid the cook um you might have a lead bartender if you have a really big uh community in your area but typically most of the other people are either going to be volunteers or they're going to be uh members themselves that are volunteering uh in order to to recoup some of the like the the monthly fee or whatever you know which is like five to twenty bucks a month or some shit depending on where you live yeah yeah it's yeah, really yeah. really stupid um, so I, I didn't regret being a member, but I basically never used the, the uh, services benefits. Yeah. So like I, yeah. maybe like twice or something <laughs> like it, it wasn't, it was just like, um, um, on base club membership. Um, yeah, I remember off and on throughout my career of the air force clubs. Um, but it's never, I never ever end up getting my money's worth out of it so i mean yet yeah, yes that's a selfish reason um but it's it never s- feels like money well spent to me yeah. or for those but I, you know that's just me i'm not somebody who uses their services that, that much. my uh, when retiring i had a choice of going to the vfw or the american legion for my uh, retirement and working on my disability things like that I right, went with right. the VFW because there's an office, a local office out here uh, in in the Valley. Um, there's one in Eagle River that I've attended a few times, like the, the clubhouse or whatever for different events, retirements, and that kind of thing. I went with them also because American Legion wasn't open the morning that I went there. And they're all in the same hallway, like veteran services organizations, VSOs, they're all in the same hospital or all in the same, the same office area of the, uh, of the veterans hospital here in Anchorage. So I went with them. I had no issues. Uh, very welcoming staff. Very fun staff. I had to cancel an appointment like last second, and they didn't care. They're like, "Yeah, no problem. We'll just schedule the next next appointment." Um, very nice people, and I've talked to and worked with uh, a few people behind the scenes uh, here locally, and it's been pretty awesome. So very happy with my local local clubs. I just don't have the time. If I I would attend more events if I had more time away from the house but my time is typically used up here at the house like we've always got kids uh today we had autumn home from school sick um i wasn't i was under the weather myself so uh my time is just just used up but i can see myself being a regular patron in the future when my wife gets smart and finally leaves me for being a dumbass Yeah, no veterans. Veterans or, organizations overall are pretty good. Like, uh, probably one of the most well known is the Wounded Warriors Project. Right. Uh, they and they I, I just signed up with them as well because they they have a ton of free stuff for disabled veterans, of which I am one. Yeah, so. and uh, so I wanted to mention though, you know, Wounded Warrior is is quite well known, but one of the lesser known, uh, but no less great organizations is Remedy Alpine. Yep. Uh, they have been, uh, the, the, what do you call them? The, the runners of that program, the, um, uh, uh, management staff of that program, um, have yep. been a guest on the show a couple of times and David, uh, Sean and Eric. Yep. Yeah, they, not only are they really cool dudes, but they do uh, a lot of work with disabled veterans and, uh, veterans that have, PTSD and and they work really closely with the Eagle River VFW. Yep, actually. Yep. So, um, 
So yeah, so the and that's another thing too. No one is a member of one veterans organization. If you're a member of a veterans organization, you're a member of several. Right. <laughs> so much crossover. Yep. Uh, they they team up to put on different charity events. Uh, they team up like like you were saying like uh, the the VSOs the veteran service organizations. Uh, there's always several of them. There's not just one, right? right. So they so you've got these office mates basically that work for different organizations, but they're working together for a common goal. And, and there are times when they will actually tell you, hey, the, these guys have more experience with this subject. You can go, and that wouldn't be the 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 American Legion has more. These, this office, these particular people have dealt with this more. They might be able to help you more. And then that office would be like, well, the guys over there in the VFW, they just had a case like that not too long ago. They might be able to work its way through the wickets a little quicker than we would. Like they work together. They're they're coopetition is what they are. You know, um, I yeah. like that word. That's a um, that's that's a NASCAR term. Coopetition. The uh, the thing that I've noticed, and, and I think this might just be my personality. Um, but I, I've really liked the more local. Um, oh yeah, right. So like, so like we, yeah, we we're, we talk about like Wounded Warrior, right? It's a national wide thing. It's a gigantic organization. Uh, but like here in my town, I don't remember the name of it, but there's a a group of of uh, uh, veterans. Uh, it's like a motorcycle club for veterans, mm -hmm. and they do poker runs and things like that and hold events to raise money to buy prosthetics for for wounded warriors um in your local they, area yeah in the local area and they work very directly like it's like the money that they make on an event like it like let's say you make five thousand dollars right that five thousand dollars will go directly to uh you know retired lieutenant colonel you know john smith or whatever that you know because he lives down the street and he he uh, he's in a wheelchair right or, or you know what i mean it's very local. It's raised locally by, uh, you know, friends and neighbors. And um, it's really, really, really cool to see stuff like that. It's, yep. it's great. Not taking anything away from the national organizations because they have more power because they're so big. Um, you know, more power to touch more lives and things like right. that. But, but the when it's personal, when, when you're raising money for your neighbor, um, it's, it's pretty great. It's good stuff. One thing I will mention, though, is a lot of these uh, services, they have very strong lobbying arms, which is one of the reasons that I withdrew from and never rejoined the AFSA, the Air Force Sergeants Association. It's essentially a lobbying group. That's, Correct. That's their primary function is to be lobbyists. And even though it would benefit me, the things that they lobby for, I am so stoutly against lobbying in a... Just, just as a practical matter, um, that I I could never rejoin after I, I realized that. Yep. Yeah. You know, once it, I, once that became clear to me, I, I got out and I never went back. Yep. I, say, same thing. I was a member of AFSA. Um, I don't know a number, quite a number of years ago, probably mm -hmm. like twelve, fifteen years ago. And and same thing. I was actually just th thinking about that on my drive home today from work uh, because I knew that we were probably going to talk about veteran stuff, and I was like. Oh man, what can I talk about? Uh, yeah. See, oh no, lobbyist bad. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they, they, and it, it's not so. There, there are other organizations like the VFW. They have a lobbying group, and you know other things. But AFSA, well, it, it, AFSA holds it, they hold events that raise money. They spend the money on other events to raise more money, and then they use the grand pool of money as a lobbying division. Yeah. Let me let me let me clarify kind of my position. I think I think maybe yours as well. Uh, the the work that they have done uh, lobbying for veterans issues. I think the work itself is good. Mm -hmm. Like they have done some good things. They've made you know they have positive appealed changes. To, yeah, to congressmen and senators and positive changes have occurred. Mm -hmm. in, at least in part because of the lobbying of AFSA and other organizations like ATA. That. Yep. Um, so I'm not I'm not downing their accomplishments or, or even really the organization itself. Um, I think what I think I speak for both of us. I definitely speak for me on this. That that the idea of lobbying and the, the you know the money in politics and the the you know we could be talking about NRA or any any other organization, not just veterans organizations, where the it's is basically an unfair advantage 
for with, for money. It, right. it, it the more money you have, the more laws that you can get passed in your favor is basically the idea of lobbying, and uh, that's what Amos and I are against. Mm-hmm. Is just like the idea of that, the principle of that, not these particular organizations. It's it, it's the same as like Robin Hood. I I'm not against Robin Hood giving money to the poor. I'm not against him redistributing wealth, but I I'm not gonna say yes. Go steal more. Like, <laughs> You know, yeah. same same thing. The results are not indicative of. Yeah, I, I don't even know how to word that better. But yeah, yeah. That, that's essentially that's it. I, I I don't like lobbying in any way, shape, or form at all. Yeah. Um, well, I, mean, I can't say that. Local lobbying is one thing. <laughs> like if you're if you have a small group and you're putting together money for one of your residents, one of your townies to fly to D.C. to meet with your congressman or your senator in person in their office in D.C., that's one thing. Mm -hmm. If you're raising money to go take your senator out to lunch at Mm -hmm. the finest restaurant in D.C., that's completely different. It is a different thing. Although they're both technically lobbying. So, anyway. All right, we, let's get away. Let's get away. Let's get out of politics and go into Twitter. Hey, man, uh, you have a tweet here that you'd like to share with us that I thought was just really, really endearing. Yeah, man. Um, so Brett Roundsville, probably most of our audience knows who's, who that is. It's, the uh, one and only Amtracker. That's right. So a few days ago, he tweeted, "I just got to experience fixing a car with a child helper for the first time. Loved it." And it brought back a lot of fond memories of being the helper. Uh, he put a little heart emoji in there. And then he skips a line and he, in parentheses he says, side note, I used to think my dad had anger issues. Now I'm positive he was a saint. I relate so hard <laughs> to this tweet. I remember one time in particular, I was probably about five or six years old and I was helping my dad hang a wall shelf. And my job was to hold the bracket in place while my dad hammered in the nails that held it in place. My little ass, for whatever reason, just as dad was about to position the nail to hammer it in, I would move (laughs) the bracket. Dad would have to break the level back out, (laughs) realign everything, tell me to hold it. I would hold it. He would go get the nail and the hammer again. And just as he's about to have it lined up, rinse and repeat. Yep. And I thought my dad was going to kill me, like literally end my life. And because he didn't harm me in any way (laughs) is testament to how controlled (laughs) the man was. Because I... I have experienced this as a father as well. And it's so cute and so wonderful to have your little helper. But also, if you're trying to actually accomplish the task, it can be very, very trying on the patients. Um, Just because, I mean, they're not good at things. (laughs) And so I've I've had to check my own anger uh, being the, you know, the parent in this scenario. So I do look back at, at my dad thinking that, okay, he... Maybe he wasn't so angry after all. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're, 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 that's legit. Completely legit. All right. My tweet is not so, uh, not so endearing. Um, so th- <laughs> do you, do you follow the tweet of God? Um, I don't think I do directly, but I see a lot of the tweets because so many of my friends follow it and like it and read it and, it, it's it's kind it's it's kind of a genius um this is the tweet of god at the tweet of god so they are replying uh, to a tweet and i'm going to read the original tweet first lindsey graham this is from the hill lindsey graham when i die god isn't going to ask why didn't you convict trump <laughs> and god's reply i won't be talking to you period <laughs> oh my god Wow. That's just beautiful. Like that's just so well played. I love that account. If you if you want to get some good laughs and see some stuff and and uh make sure that you keep your your own soul in check, 
go follow God at the Tweet of God on Twitter. Kent, where can people find you, man? I'm at rm underscore del noche on Twitter. Um, del noche or, or del noche seventy seven, pretty much everywhere else. But uh, follow me on Twitter at rm underscore del noche. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Ethan Kane e t h a n c a i n e. I'm Ethan Kane pretty much everywhere, unless I'm Ethan Kane seventy seven. And you know, if you're playing Division two, find me Ethan Kane seventy seven. And you can follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery r i t u a l m i s e r y. Yeah, like I said earlier, I really want everybody to join our Discord. Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. All the streamies, go hit the stream, hit the Discord. Wow, See? You did I did remember. I had to remind myself like repeatedly over and over again. Mm-hmm. And of course you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. And of course, you can. Hold on, change this. And again, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Uh, thanks for listening, for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Rich Misery Podcast. See ya! Hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. I love that. Flavor toothpaste. Wonderful soul.